Very good. Well, I have 12 noon. Bob, take it away. <laughs> Chris, this, this is exciting. You and I have been friends for a long, long time, and you've been a friend of AJR for a long, long time, so it's great to have you back. Sorry we're not in person, like you said. <clears throat> It'd be a lot more fun. Yeah. You know, I, I was uh, looking over your resume. You're a USA Today best-selling author. You're a keynote speaker, which you've done for us many times, mm -hmm. and you're an entrepreneur. You uh, co-founded Curator, a Facebook advertising digital marketing uh, company that helps businesses grow faster. Uh, this is really interesting. In the last four years, <clears throat> you used your book, The Conversion Code, to grow Curator to $15 million in annual revenue without raising any venture capital. My hat's off to you. That, that is truly, truly amazing. Elbow grease. Before that, you worked for two billionaires, Dan Gilbert and Lou Perlman. You worked for a uh, <clears throat> company I think we've all heard of, Move Inc., which mm -hmm. we know better by Realtor.com, mm -hmm. and uh, that little startup, Dot Loop, that was bought for $108 million by the Zillow Group. And I hope you got a little bit of, of that money. But uh, you, you, are, you are one wild and crazy guy, and we are so happy to have you here today. Thanks for being a part of the, of the webinar. Yeah, thanks for having me. I always love working with you guys. You know, the most innovative association in the country by far, the most engaged members. You guys do good work. I do wish we were in person. Um, I'm also, I know we got to say this for Lori, I am going to be speaking at the virtual engage event in September. Right. And, right. Uh, I'm actually excited because today all the content that we're going to share is brand new. People here have never heard it before, but my newest book is called exactly what to say for real estate agents. And it's a bestseller and I'm going to be unveiling a whole new speech to kick off that event on the agent track. So pumped for that. Any uh, time Bob invites me to do anything, I'm going to say yes. Uh, he's a good guy, runs a good company. And, uh, you know, we got to give credit to Brad Inman for bringing us together and connecting us as colleagues. And it's been a great relationship. When you read off all that Brad stuff I've done. He, he, uh, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a long time. And uh, that's the thing about this industry. People either come and go real quick or they're in it for life. You know, it's kind of like the restaurant industry. You know, you, you end up being a server forever or you serve and you get out of it. And uh, I know you and I are pretty much married to this business uh, long-term. So it's great to be on. Great, well, we'll go ahead and get into the conversation. We're actually having a conversation with Chris today. Um, he does have some slides and things to share with us as we go through. If you have a question, for Chris, type it into the uh, comments and we will get to it in just a little bit. And we'll say bye to Bob for now, um, but Bob will be staying on and, and typing things into the chat with us as well. So um, so Chris, uh, we, we wanted to talk to you again. You're, this is called stay on top of your game now. This is all, like you said, relevant information for the right now. Um, so starting with just agents' websites, what should agents have on their websites right now um, taking into account the new normal as we're calling it, or, you know, to even just be sensitive to what people are going through, um, during this, this pandemic. Yeah. You know, my co-author from exactly what to say, he has a great quote about this, that when times change, it's time to change. This is a new normal. Like hopefully we're not playing a drinking game today. Because if I say new normal or unprecedented or <laughs> social distancing, everybody in Houston is going to be drunk by the end of this thing because they are just hearing it all the time. Yeah. But the reality mm -hmm. is that there has been a shift that has happened. And so your website, right? Like your website has to change. Your marketing has to change. Your messaging has to change. Your listing presentation has to change your, your open-mindedness. Like nobody that comes on these calls. And I know you guys get some smart people on these calls. Nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. It, 
you know, if it were me, I'm kind of old school. I don't want a new normal. I want the old normal. I don't want to wear a mask. I wear it, but I don't want to wear it. I don't want to do Zooms all day. I want to go hang out with people all day. I don't want to have virtual coffee. I want to have real coffee. <laughs> you know, like I like belly to belly. I like people. And I think most of the people that have gotten into this business, they do as well. They're in this business because they're a people person. And now they're all sheltering in place and social distancing. And it's been hard. Mm -hmm. You know, it's been hard for all of us. Now, thankfully, the real estate market and real estate agents have been deemed essential. And it's still busy and active. Bob was just giving us some really positive numbers that we can share later. But when it comes to your website specifically, I want to give the audience several ideas that they can do right away that kind of factor in, hey, the whole world just changed. Because what, what's happening in consumers' minds, they're asking themselves three questions. Should I buy or sell a home? Can I buy or sell a home? How do I buy or sell a home, right? Mm -hmm. So your messaging and marketing and content and pages and blogs have to answer those questions for people because those are the questions that they have in their mind. Before, all they thought was, let me go find a home. Let me search for a home. Let me find an agent. Let me get my home's value. But now there's so much uncertainty because even if you're in Texas or Florida where I'm at or where you're at and things have gotten a little better, the national media is the media that most people are listening to and it's doom and gloom. It's right. sad. It's depressing. So let me, sh let me share my screen here and I'm going to share with you guys a couple ideas that you can do that I just think it's kind of a no brainer to pull off. So the first one, this is a website you guys can check out, connieanddan.com slash stay at home. And these are agents in Georgia. And what they've done is they've basically factored in like, hey, the, the industry just changed. Like we were talking before the call that even though the restaurants are opening, people aren't necessarily going, you know? Even if you're going to be allowed to do an open house, the seller might not want it. You know, even if you're allowed to do a showing, the seller might not want a lot of showing. So this is actually a beautiful website that they built on a page, Stay at Home, the virtual sale program. The health and safety of you and your family is our top priority during this crucial time. We're going to provide you the tools you need to limit your exposure while choosing a home to buy or putting your home on the market. And they break down like virtual home consultations through Zoom, advanced 3D tours and cameras. Like there's actually a camera called Theta. Everybody should look that up. And it's, it's very inexpensive and it'll record the 3D tour. Showing precautions. We're instructing agents to wear gloves. We're instructing the buyers to keep their hands in their pockets. You can take their temperature at the front door, right? And then, of course, dot loop and DocuSign and things like electronic signatures, things like online signings for closings. And if you need to buy a home, same thing. I know HAR is doing some really cool stuff with a virtual open house option. And, you know, believe it or not, Christina, back in my early days in the industry, because I was in Florida working in South Florida, a lot of the investors were coming from overseas. So a lot of Chinese investors, a lot of Brazil investors, and they would buy a home by just seeing a Skype video. They would just let the realtor walk through the house with a Skype video and they would make an offer on it because they were just looking at the numbers. And so now all of a sudden, like Joe America is doing the same thing. People are buying homes without walking through the home. But to have that Matterport or to have that Theta camera, or to be able to have the agent at the house and walk through the home for you is critical. Virtual home showing, virtual inspections. So you've got to educate people. Another thing that I've seen, and here's another example, you know, this is rossmanteam.com slash virtual real estate. It is a new way to do real estate. If you need to buy or sell a home during these uncertain times, you're going to need a plan and it better be digital, right? The real estate industry, Christina, is always behind. We have to drag people kicking and screaming to get off their AOL, you know, and to get on the Gmail. 
We have to beg people to use Facebook when it first started. We still have to beg people to take their phone out and record a video. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like tough to get people to change, but these are the kind of pages, virtual appointments, electronic signatures, digital marketing, showing restrictions. Like this is the kind of content that you need to have. There's actually another one. Uh, this is the woodbeckteam.com slash COVID-19. And Justin did a great job of basically saying, you know what, I'm going to record a video for every scenario that people are asking themselves about. What will happen with foreclosures during COVID-19? Should I buy a house during COVID-19? Should I sell my house because of COVID-19, right? Mm -hmm. so using what I know from what's happened in the past, these are the scenarios in which I would sell now. If you were already planning on selling within the next year or so, list it now, mm -hmm. right? So you've got to get out in front of this. And then a couple other bonus ideas, like on the kind of concept of virtual tours, you know, this is a really cool article one of our clients wrote, which is 10 Dublin homes for sale with 3D virtual tours. So kind of going into the MLS and going into your IDX and finding those listings that have the virtual tour and putting those into a listicle, putting those into an article. If I click through on any of these listings, they all have a 3D tour. It looks like that one actually sold, which is great. So these are listings with a 3D tour that people can basically walk through virtually online. The thing about 3D tours that's great is people are probably going to want to do this and hopefully they might still want to see the home in person too. But I know most agents on the call, their favorite showing is a second showing, right? Their favorite showing is a, a showing where they want to see it for the second time. And with this type of technology to be able to walk through these properties virtually, you know, you're really replicating a showing. So whether you use Matterport, or whether you use the Theta camera, but the idea is to turn that into content, turn that into an article that people can check out on your website. The last idea for websites that I had is, you know, real estate agents, they always wanna be a resource for their local community. You know, um, I think about the good old fashioned preferred vendor list, right? You know, wanting to, like, if I need to know a good painter or a good plumber like we actually just this week got a basketball goal installed at our house you mm -hmm. know who do you think i messaged to ask about that my realtor you know what i mean if i need a fence whatever it may be so one of the things that started to happen you guys can go to ericrollo.com here is there's a lot of agents that are creating a resource center for covid19 and what they're doing is they're just curating all the most important updates. So the coronavirus cases, the updates from the Massachusetts Department of Government, like what is an essential service? What companies are listed as essential services? Where can I go if I have symptoms and I need testing? And then there's another new word, Christina, in real estate called forbearance. People that are out of work, people that are unemployed, and they're not able to pay their mortgage, you know, the comp a lot of the lenders are allowing for forbearance where you skip payments and those payments get added to the end of your loan. So like, can I look up my loan to figure out if I have options? What is Fannie Mae doing about it? What is Freddie Mac doing about it? You know, we've heard a lot about PPP, you know, the PPP loan. So how does that work? Late, late tax filing. I know all the real estate agents are pumped about that one. That they get the, you know, they get the extension on when their taxes are due. How about unemployment information, a survival kit, unemployment benefits, student loans, self-employed, where can I volunteer? So there's always been kind of these online hubs, right? Mm -hmm. And your website can become this hub. Like all of a sudden people are thinking about looking up how many cases there are, looking up if a business is essential and they go to your website. So between virtual stay at home, 3D tours, answering these questions people have, creating a resource, and 
this is not even creating, this is curating. This is you going out and doing the work of finding all the links and putting them in one place, just like you would do for a vendor list. That's wonderful. Those are all such great ideas. And I shared all of those links for everybody in the chat if you missed those, if you wanna go review them later. Um, so thank you for giving us those ideas. And, yeah. and you're right, it's, it's curating uh, the content mm -hmm. instead of just creating the content. So you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel in a lot of these cases, the resources are out there. That's yeah, the hard it. work is just grabbing it and putting it in mm -hmm. one place and then go play offense with it, right? Like nobody knew what a no contact showing is, no contact open houses. Mm -hmm. Like you have to over educate right now. You know, it's a whole new world. And so the thing is like us as the industry, we're gonna learn it quicker because we have to. But the buyers and the sellers and the people that are our past clients in our sphere, we have to be the, the teacher. We have to take the message to them and educate them. That's great. It's, it's kind of funny because we've been um, preaching this for a long time to realtors. Just mm -hmm. because you understand something doesn't mean your client or customer does, right? getting approved for a loan or, you know, just little things like that. Mm -hmm. And with, with what you're saying, these are basically just answering the new questions that we've maybe figured out the answer to, but clients or customers have not yet. Yeah. Like the, a lot of people don't know what the MLS is. Mm -hmm. They don't know what escrow is. They don't even know what an HOA is. Like you have to over educate people at all times. Mm -hmm. And I know that we are just like married to the business. You got to remember, people only buy or sell a home every five to seven years. Mm -hmm. So even without COVID-19, there's a lot that changes over that period. And now there's just been this rapid change in the last couple months. I mean, can you believe it's only been a couple months? It feels like it's been a couple <laughs> years. It does. <laughs> it definitely does. So moving, moving along, you mentioned um, some of the doom and gloom in the, in the national media. Um, obviously there's going to be questions about the real estate market here in Houston. We also have, you know, the oil industry to think about, um, how should agents answer the question that, that we get, you know, how's the market, that typical question that, that we hear. Yeah. It's the most common question that agents get asked. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when you have a question that you get asked a lot, you've got to be able to answer it and you've got to be able to answer it well. And I think there's really an opportunity right now for agents to stand out. Meaning if you can be an expert right now, because everybody in real estate, they act like they know their numbers and they know all the trends. And that's not true. A small percentage of agents really understand the numbers and the trends and the data. But if you do, you've got a great opportunity to stand out. And I want to share uh, this blog post that I found and this is actually one of our clients and he's in British Columbia. Uh, it's, I'm going to pull the article up. If you go to danwordle.com slash blog. Okay. And what he did is he wrote this article. It's right here. It's called sketching out the potential impact of COVID-19 on the BC housing market. And what's crazy about this article, and he's got a bunch of other good articles too about the market and market trends. Like I haven't found better content than what Dan's putting out, but on our websites, it calculates how long it takes to read an article based how long the article is. And this is a nine minute read. This is not saying, oh, the market's great. <laughs> Oh, well, the market's unbelievable. <laughs> oh, are you looking to buy or sell, right? Mm -hmm. This is like being the expert. So he went deep and he has his summary of findings. While it's unknown what will happen long term, there has been a sudden economic stop. Based on our scenario, BC home sales and prices will likely face declines in the spring and early summer, but should uh, correct and get better by the second half of the year. The change to the mortgage rates, will mute the impact of falling interest rates. But he went deep and he brought out the graphs and the charts and the mortgages and the unemployment. And he also looked at historical data. So he looked at like in past recessions, what happened to home prices in that area? So what happened in 2008? What happened in 1990? You know, there was a dot-com bubble 
in 2000. There was a housing market crash in 08. How can we let that past help us predict the future? And by the way, speaking of like sharing content, you know, I just heard the Redfin CEO this week said that the, this is the definition of a V-shaped recovery because there's so much activity. Bob was just saying traffic to HAR.com is way up. It went from 9 million to 16 million. There was like 3,800 open houses, virtual and in person. So we want a V-shaped recovery. It's starting to look like that. The CEO of Compass actually said that one year ago compared to this year, they had less homes sold during the same week. And there's also more bidding wars. There's more offers over asking price, but this is in depth. This is an expert writing this, looking at MLS average prices based on GDP. Like, I just thought Dan did a really good job of this. You guys should check out his blog because he's answering how's the market. Vancouver real estate versus the virus, April 2020 update. This recession is going to be different for the housing market. You've got to be providing that data. And I know HAR is providing snapshots weekly of the data and that's actually important as well let's say you're not an expert or you don't understand the market quite as well as this gentleman well you can also just share the numbers share the facts like this is a screenshot from a, a county in georgia and this was in april you know right in the middle of all the drama and during just this one week in april there were 213 homes listed. There were 114 homes that were sold. 224 homes were put under contract. Like create a little graphic every week or take what HAR gives you and read that to your consumers. Put that on social media, do an email campaign because what happens is there's a herd mentality. If people think that no one is doing anything, that's a problem because people want to do what other people are doing. If no one's selling their home, I don't want to sell my home. If no one's buying homes, I don't want to buy a home. But the truth is that there's a ton of activity. So just share the numbers. Like um, I'm interviewing an agent this week. His name's Ben Kenny. He's just a really sharp guy. He said, you need to know your numbers right now more than ever. But you need to keep them in your back pocket. If somebody asks you, how's the market? Pull out the snapshot of the latest week and talk about the activity. I bet if we were to look at these same numbers for Houston, it would be like a thousand homes listed and thousands of homes sold. It would be through the roof. So you've got to be able to answer how's the market. You can go really deep like Dan and you can be an economist. Because if you read that article from Dan, there's only one thought that you have. I'm going to use him when I need to do something. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you may not be able to go that deep every week. You may not have that deep of a knowledge of, you know, economics and just sharing simple stuff like this. Like this was a graphic created in Canva, a very simple graphic design tool that anyone, no matter what your skill set is, can use. So this is how you answer how's the market. You answer it with facts and opinions and data. Uh, you definitely don't want to be the agent right now, Christina, that's just saying, oh, the market's great. <laughs> I, I think that would make you out of touch. You know, I think that would make you yeah. kind of what people perceive real estate agents to be, which is greedy and lazy and entitled. The truth is the market has never gone through what it's going through right now. So your knowledge, like I just think people are going to want experts more than ever. Um, average is overrated. <laughs> If you're going to buy or sell a home right now, it's going to be scary to do it. And so you need that trusted advisor to hold your hand more than ever. That's great. That's great. Uh, fo following up on the website question I asked earlier, um, Merle asked, uh, what is a great company uh, to use to create a website? Um, I did let him know that HR Platinum subscribers have a website available to them that they can use. Is there any other uh, company that you'd recommend for a website creation? Yeah, well, I would have to recommend my own company <laughs> because Curator, that's one of the things that we do for our clients. Like all of the websites that I'm mentioning, ConnieAndDan.com, 
danwordle.com, ericrollo.com. We actually built and designed all of those websites. Of course, there's like Squarespace and WordPress and there's a million website companies out there that do good stuff. But yeah, like design matters. Um, and it's awesome that HAR members get, you know, a website with their platinum level of service. But, you know, your website has to be a verb. Um, it's kind of like a CRM. My co-founder, Jimmy, he says a CRM without great marketing is nothing but a phone book. You know, so like a website without a plan is really just an awesome business card. You've got to figure out what am I going to do with this thing each week and each month to make sure people are visiting it, to make sure people are using it. But yeah, Curator makes websites if you guys want to check us out. Great. Thank you. Um, so we've, we've kind of seen this from our members a little bit, maybe a little nervous about promoting listings right now, uh, maybe promoting or trying to get leads on, on social media or Facebook. Um, should agents be doing that right now? And if so, how would you suggest they do it? Yeah, you, you want to be sensitive to the times. You know, you definitely want to be respectful of what's happening in the world. But at Curator, we actually have a technology that we built called Curator Brain. And what it does is it actually connects to all of our different clients' websites and Facebook pages, and it looks at their ads, and it sees how their ads are performing. And it shows us things like cost per click, cost per lead, you know, cost per impression, and what's happened, Christina, over the last couple months is that the usage of Facebook has doubled. People are on their phone and they're on Facebook more than ever. Mm -hmm. But at the same time that Facebook's usage has doubled, people have pulled back from advertising. So that's why the ads are so cheap. You've got more eyeballs than ever and you've got less people willing to advertise than ever. Mm -hmm. I can tell you that if you've got the budget, you should be advertising your listings on Facebook. I'm actually gonna pull this up. I'll just pull up our uh, tool because it sure. is a real time feed of ads just to give people some perspective on like what's possible right now for a listing. The other thing to factor in here, Christina, is there's less listings than ever. So because you have less listings, each listing becomes more appealing. Mm -hmm. listings less, become scarce less competition <laughs> exactly so this is an example this was last friday so this is you know brand new hot off the presses and what we're looking at is ads that got the most link clicks in the last week with a 50 to 100 dollar budget so this was a listing that was promoted for 95 dollars. and if you look at these stats for 95 dollars this listing got 16,000 impressions. So that's basically how many people saw the listing. Mm -hmm. And if you notice in the ad here, you see there's a link for people to go to the agent's website to learn more about the property. The number of website clicks that this listing got was 1,588. Literally one ad for one listing last Friday got almost 1,600 people to the agent's website. And if you look at the cost per click, it was one cent. <laughs> one cent cost mm -hmm. per click. So I know that sometimes like, should we advertise or should we promote things? I saw somebody in the comments saying, you know, we don't want to be a vulture, right? I get it. Mm -hmm. But if you look <laughs> at the data and if you look at the numbers, People are clicking on listings more than ever. Here's another one, same thing, $100 ad spend, 1,000 website clicks. Again, just to a listing promotion. Mm -hmm. So yeah, people are clicking. Now the other part of this is you've got to have a plan right now to generate listings. Like there's gonna be buyers and there's gonna be buy people that wanna buy, but there's not gonna be homes for them to buy you're going to run into buyers that want to buy and they don't find their home more than ever. 
So you also have to have a strategy, whether it's through social media or direct mail or through door knocking or whatever your kind of method of marketing is. You've also got to have a strategy to win more listings. You need seller leads, you know, that's going to be a huge, huge important thing for the next several months. So as an example, this is uh, an article one of our clients put out, why low inventory may be an advantage when selling during COVID-19. If you live in a neighborhood that traditionally has 15 or 20 listings, and right now there's only five or six, that can be an advantage to the seller. Let's be really clear, home values haven't gone down yet. If you can find data that says home values are gonna go down in the future, that's another good reason that somebody should sell now before the home value goes down. And the other thing is there's a, there's a strategy that's been proven in real estate for years, which is we have buyers. Like we have buyers who are looking for this type of property in this neighborhood with these features, with this, and there ain't any. And so if your home meets that description, please let us know because we have buyers looking for that home. I live in an area called Avalon Park. If you're working with a buyer that's looking in Avalon Park, that's looking for a three bedroom that has a $500,000 budget that wants there to be a pool, that is an ad. That should be an email campaign. That should be a direct mail piece. So every buyer that you work with over the next six to 12 months that can't find a home that they love, turn their story, turn their struggle as a way to find more listings. Okay. So how would you um, suggest agents identify who from their database is still planning to buy this year and who's going to wait? Yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite quotes from my co-author, Phil Jones, he says, if you do not ask, you do not get, right? <laughs> and so... One of the things that is really unfortunate, Christina, about COVID-19 is the timing. You know, it hit during basically the busy spring season. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people were working with buyers, a lot of people were bringing on listings and they decided not to list. And it is fair for a buyer to freak out a little bit and for them to maybe want to wait, mm -hmm. you know? So one of the things that I uncovered when I did all the homework for my book, The Conversion Code, was that if you want to generate business through email marketing, okay, meaning mass emails, your emails, they can't just be a big newsletter. Not to say that sending a newsletter is not a good way to stay in touch long term, mm -hmm. but if you want to convert a lead, if you want to convert a subscriber into somebody that's actually ready to buy, sending short and simple emails with questions is one of the best ways to do that. And you can send it to all your buyers at the same time. Now, if you send a listing with a bunch of pictures and it looks like a target ad, don't expect a bunch of people to reply and say, nice house. <laughs> if you send a plain text email, one or two sentences in my book, I call it the nine word email. It has to really be short and sweet, easy to answer, have a question mark at the end of it. And I'll actually share this. I'll show one of the um, emails that we used that got a ton of replies. And it was very simple. The subject line was, do you plan on buying a home in 2020? And the email, this is the actual email. Hi. Christina, I'm <laughs> conducting a poll of all of my local home buyers. Are you still planning on buying a house in 2020 or have your plans changed, right? You're giving them the out, but there's only two ways to answer this question. The first way, which is the way that we're hoping for would be, yeah, I'm still planning on buying a home and it might be, we're actively looking. It might be we're waiting till the fall. It might be we're waiting till winter or the holidays, right? But 
by identifying who from your database is still looking to buy this year, what happens is the follow-up that you do with them becomes much more relevant. So if I'm actively looking to buy this year, you're gonna wanna put me on the listing alerts, you're gonna wanna send me properties that hit the market, you're gonna wanna call me and keep in touch with me more frequently. But at the same time, we're being a human being and we're giving people an out. Have your plans change. Because if somebody says, you know what? My husband got laid off and we've decided not to buy. We're gonna continue renting. That's okay, you wanna know that too. You want to know who to focus on. And so you can send one email and basically create two groups of people in your database the people that are actively searching and that are definitely going to buy this year and help you make money, and the people that are waiting longer term. The type of content you send, the frequency of follow-up would change based on that answer. So simple, short, and sweet. Whenever I show these emails, I think some, sometimes people are like, where's the rest of the email? <laughs> but that's the whole point is that by it being simple and brief and easy to answer, that's actually why it gets so many replies. What I say is that conversations create conversions. Conversations create customers. So send an email like that. Watch what happens to your inbox. It will blow up with responses. Great. Um, so s somewhat related here to uh, the next question. So I was going to ask, um, how agents can give back to their community and build their brand at the same time. But I do see also a question from Juan about just kind of building his brand and his following in a new city. He is, he is relocated to our area. So um, maybe those coincide, maybe those don't. What are your thoughts? Yeah, well, listen, it's a challenge. You know, when you're in a new area, everything's hard. You don't know, you don't know where stuff's at. You don't have any friends. You might not have any family. So the short answer is that you have to hustle. You have to roll up your sleeves and you have to do it the, the hard way. The good answer is most agents are still way behind when it comes to social media. So using things like Instagram properly, using things like Facebook properly, creating content on a blog, do, having a YouTube channel, having a podcast. I mean, those are great ways to build a following quickly. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, uh, most agents still haven't kind of gone there. They're still kind of trying to figure out what to do. Now, what I've found as far as building your brand and giving back, like a lot of the agents that we work with, Christina, they're very philanthropic by nature. I know a lot of agents have a cause that's close to their heart, that whether it's pets or homelessness or whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But right now, you know, there's a technique that we call riding on the shoulder of giants. Meaning, if you see a big company do something nationally that gets a lot of buzz, you should start asking yourself, like, how can I do that locally? So how can I replicate what I saw Starbucks do at the local level to help my brand? How can I take an idea that I saw go viral on social media nationally and what can we learn from that to do locally? So there's actually a really cool campaign. Uh, I'll share my screen here that Starbucks mm -hmm. did. And they basically announced like, we're going to give frontline workers free coffee. And I think they're doing this through the end of May. I'm, gu I'm guessing they'll probably extend it. And anything you can do right now for frontline workers Number one, like they deserve it, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. <laughs> become the new heroes, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I remember after 9-11, it was the first responders, right? It was police and it was fire. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's nurses and it's doctors and it's healthcare providers that are putting their life on the line to combat this virus. So Starbucks did a really smart thing here. It went really viral. It got mm -hmm. featured on the news. And the thing that I love the most is you should see all the nurses and doctors like taking selfies with their free coffee, thanking Starbucks. Mm -hmm. So when you do stuff like this, like 
it's not that it's necessarily going to get you a deal, but it's going to build your brand. It's going to show that you care. It's going to give back to the local community. So one of our clients, he took this idea, and I just thought it was really smart. And he did a campaign called Frontline Lunch. And the other people that need our help right now, of course, are local restaurants. Mm -hmm. You know, McDonald's doesn't need your help. <laughs> but <laughs> some of the local places we were talking before the call, mm -hmm. they're hurt and they need help. So this is kind of a, you can kind of kill two birds with one stone. And so what Michael Gonzalez did, he's an agent with ERA Evergreen Real Estate. He actually partnered with a local restaurant called Captain Woody's and he put down a $500 tab. And basically any frontline worker can call there, mention his company and they get lunch courtesy of his company. And then he took this campaign, put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, put it on Twitter. And it really went viral, tons of likes, tons of comments, tons of shares. It was so successful that he ended up replicating it in several other markets. Um, and actually there was something that happened in Texas. See if I can find this real quick. Um, George Hill, uh, who's a former San Antonio Spur, he actually did, and then here's the article, because it was covered uh, in all the newspapers, it was covered in all the media. One of our clients, this was really smart, he partnered with this basketball player, and they did the same thing, a $1,000 bar tab uh, at Frelo's restaurant, and basically anyone that comes there gets courtesy of him. And you can see right here, Greater San Antonio Real Estate. So this was actually an agent that pulled this off, partnered with a local athlete, and it went viral. All the news covered it, all the media covered it. Now, you may not have $1,000. <laughs> you may not know a famous athlete, but the concept here is pretty sound, right? Mm -hmm. You're supporting frontline workers, you're supporting the local businesses, and you're doing something for your brand that really matters. I can't imagine one of the frontline workers calling in, getting the free lunch, and then forgetting about you down the road. I can't mm -hmm. imagine the owner of Captain Woody's not sending you a referral if somebody said, hey, by the way, do you know any good realtors in the area? Oh, you know what? You got to call Michael Gonzalez. Here's what he did for us. So reciprocity, generosity, charitable causes, they're made for social media. Mm -hmm. People love sharing that stuff. That's one of the, remember the ice bucket challenge, you know? Yeah. For People ALS. love to share that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah. So you can give back to the local businesses. You can give back to the frontline workers. And you can get your brand out there with some positive news. That's good. That's good. I've even seen some, you know, Facebook groups, Houston area. We have, a, we're known for our restaurants. We love to eat. So Facebook groups supporting restaurants in the area, right? Who doesn't love to eat? So <laughs> that's another yeah. great way. I've seen realtors putting those groups together. So it's, it's, it's pretty neat. Um, so on some of those blogs you showed earlier, I did see a lot of videos, video content. Uh, what type of videos should agents be making right now to really stand out um, and kind of be the digital mayor, if you will, of their market? Yeah, well, it's funny because on the kind of same concept, like takeout is the only restaurant option mm -hmm. um, or delivery, you know, and people got to eat. Right now, we've been cooking a lot, Christina. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of cooking. I've been trying to talk my wife into a whole week of ordering delivery. You know, like let's take a week off, and we have a couple a couple nights a week where we get delivery or takeout. But um, one of our clients in San Diego, I saw him doing something really sharp, where as he gets takeout from a local restaurant, or as he gets food delivered from a local restaurant. He takes out his phone, he does a video, he talks about the restaurant, he talks about the food, he talks about the specials, 
he talks about how the, they were offering, you know, contactless delivery, right? How that was um, an option for them as well. And he's just giving back. Like we work with a lot of agents and they do videos of all kinds of stuff. They do market report videos, listing videos, buyer and seller tips, interviews with local business owners, right? But I just think right now, um, simple and video does great on Facebook. The way Facebook's algorithm works, they prefer video. In fact, they prefer live video if you can do it live. So I'll, I'll show a couple screenshots here of, uh, of what Jason Cassidy is doing. He's a compass agent out in San Antonio, or excuse me, out in San Diego. But it's nothing revolutionary. It's a minute, a minute and a half. Hey, I just got pizza from this place. It's arguably the best pizza and Italian food in San Diego. I've been looking forward to coming here for weeks. I was able to call ahead. They had a table set up out front. They're also running some specials. And in that scenario, uh, the family that owns that is actually from a region in Italy that was hit really hard with the coronavirus. And so they were also giving back. Um, the screenshot on the right there, it was like a wine cellar that he's a member of. He went to pick up his wine of the month. They've got modified hours. They're at the stay at home phase. They're offering 40% off of all their wines for wine members. Like who doesn't want to learn about that? So, you know, you can see like, he's not all dressed up. He's got a baseball hat on. This is not a big film crew following him. This is no pressure, but you know, creating content that helps local businesses, you're going to eat anyway. You're going to get food anyway. You're probably, and this is what we've learned, the number one thing that stops people from creating videos is they don't know what to create. And so this is just a simple, effective idea. And he's getting a ton of likes, a ton of views. You can see even the restaurant thanked him in the comment there. Uh, Carmen said great owners too. They're very giving and they're film, philanthropic to the San Diego community. So you guys know the best places. You guys know the best Mexican place in Houston and the best Italian place. And they need you to shop there, but you can become a commercial for them. You know, that's what we talk about being the digital mayor. And you could extend this to the salon that's open now or the restaurant that's open now that you're actually eating on the patio. I actually saw Jason, he's now doing a blog post about which San Diego restaurants have reopened for dine-in. Cause that's something like <clears throat> my wife and I, we go on Google maps and we put in our favorite places and it's got the checkbox, dine-in, take out, carry out, uh, because we don't know. So you spreading that word for them uh, is a smart play. A lot of these businesses, Christina, they don't even do a good job of marketing themselves. Yeah. So you can kind of step in and help them out. That's, that's great. Um, so to that same respect, um, and I actually want you to clear this up because I've heard some realtors say that nobody blogs anymore. Nobody needs to blog anymore. So number one, are, is blogging still relevant? And if so, what should they be blogging about to generate traffic to their websites? Yeah, there's a great article from Seth Godin. He's like the godfather of marketing. <coughs> and he says, bring me your dead stuff. <laughs> bring me your dead stuff because blogging is dead and email is dead and websites are dead and Facebook is dead, right? There's people that would say that about anything. Now, what I would say would be that when people are not doing something, that's when you should do it. Like it, just in the last month, Christina, everybody's a podcaster now. Everybody does Zoom webinars. Like mm -hmm. I've been doing a podcast for almost 10 years and I'm watching all of these amateurs come in and now become webinar hosts and podcast interviewers, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe that's a good call. Maybe it's not, but <clears throat> blogging is not dead. And I'll tell you why. You have to create content for your past clients in your sphere. They're not always looking for listings. They're not always looking for their home's value. Like I'll, I'll share a couple blog post ideas that went really viral for our customers. 
and they're simple, like 10 things to do at home while you're social distancing. And this is a really good one for families. My kids are on their devices nonstop. They're connected to their phones. We're looking for ideas. Like I heard a comedian the other day, he said he actually finished Netflix. He watched every single episode and every single movie <laughs> and he's done with Netflix now. So these are a couple articles that Brace Holmes put out. You can go to braceholmes.com slash blog, but they put out the 10 day declutter challenge. They put out 10 things to do while you're social distancing. One of our clients in Beverly Hills, he actually put out this really cool idea where the most famous museums in the world actually have like their version of a Matterport. You can actually walk through the Louvre virtually. You can walk through the Smithsonian virtually. A lot of the, um, the landmarks have these as well. So like the eight wonders of the world, a lot of them actually have a virtual tour where you can walk through it and it's a beautiful experience. Uh, it's scottgoshorn.com slash virtual dash tourism. And this is actually the inside of the Smithsonian and you can see the map at the top there. You can go from each exhibit to the exhibits. You can learn about them. It's, a, it's beautiful, it's interactive, it's multimedia. You don't have to create these tours. He basically just wrote an article that links over to all these different tours. And it did really well for them. These are listicles. There's a organization called Buzzfeed when they basically invented the listicle. Mm -hmm. um, seven reasons you should do this, eight ways to do this. And again, when we look at our data, when we look at things like curator brain and we see which ads are getting the most clicks and the most traffic and the most shares and the most comments. This is often the stuff that's getting the most virality. And this is also something that you can easily send your past clients in your sphere of influence. Um, another idea that we found, and this is a guy from the office named John Krasinski, a very famous actor. He started a YouTube show from home called Some Good News, right? Like right now, there is so much bad news. It is very easy to find. Turn on your favorite news station, open your favorite newspaper, you're gonna be inundated with bad news. Go on Twitter, look at the trending topics. Most of it's negative. So when people are being really negative, like one way to stand out is to share things that are really positive. Our client, Brian Powers, he had an article called Three Good Things, three positive things that happened this week that will make you feel good about the local community. Um, one of my favorite marketing books is called Purple Cat, and it's by Seth Godin. And basically the concept is that if every cow is black and white or if every cow is brown, you don't really notice it. But if you were to drive by and see a purple cow, you would stop and get out of your car and take pictures and it would draw you in. So right now, the doom and gloom is normal. So providing positive news providing uplifting information can actually help you stand out. That's wonderful. Thank you for, for sharing that too. Um, we had a few questions coming in. Um, mm -hmm. First of all, they want to know how to get in contact with you and how to follow you. And they want to know your, the name of your podcast so they can subscribe to that as well. Yes, the best place to go, actually, um, if you guys are watching right now, do me a favor, go follow me on Instagram. That's my Instagram, Chris underscore S-M-T-H. Please let me know that you are watching on the HAR webinar today. Um, I'd love to connect with everybody there. Our podcast is called The Water Cooler. You can go to curator.com. And if you go to our blog, you'll find the water cooler. And then if people are interested in kind of what we do and what we sell, there's actually a button right here. It says, watch a demo. It's curator.com slash demo. There's actually a video that people can watch that explains everything we do at Curator, our products, our services, 
our pricing, our availability. And then if they decide uh, that they like what they see in the video, you actually can book a time right on my calendar to chat right below the video. So curator.com slash demo. Uh, and then if you go to curator.com slash blog, our show is called The Water Cooler. So right here on the left-hand side, the category Water Cooler has all of our podcasts, all of our interviews with agents, um, all of our trainings. We've really done a ton of content over the years. And you can also, if you go to iTunes or Spotify, just search Curator Water Cooler and all of our podcasts are available uh, with the audio format as well. Awesome, thank you. I was making I sure I wasn't on mute. Doing a good job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was just making sure I wasn't on mute there. <laughs> All righty, uh, so I do have one last question for yeah. you. You've given us so many great ideas um, in this last almost hour. Um, just to kind of wrap it all up, so what should agents be doing right now for their past clients and sphere of influence um, as we all kind of go through these unprecedented times? Yeah. Got a drink. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is water, just to be clear. <laughs> um, we, now, I will say on the water cooler, we do actually drink a beer or drink a shot. It's, it's meant to be a laid back show. But, you know, I, I remember when I first got into this industry, I was working for a company called Top Producer. And they're, they're a very famous CRM. Lots of agents have used them for their database. And I went to do a training at an office in Clearwater and a lady came up to me and she was crying and she just gave me a hug. And I said, what's going on? And she said, I have to thank you because if it wasn't for my database, I would have had to have gotten out of the industry. If it wasn't for having a system and having all my past clients and all my sphere of influence and all their birthdays and all their home anniversaries and having all these action plans, tell me who to call and when to call and all these emails to send them with helpful information, she didn't think she would have made it through the housing market crash. And so what I don't want people to do, and one of my favorite quotes is, don't trip over nickels to pick up pennies. There's a lot of blogging and Facebook and email, and there's all kinds of stuff that you can do online that goes out to a lot of people. But one-to-one -one private messages to the people that matter the most is really still the best thing to do. So I'll actually show you guys a screenshot of a text message. This is from my realtor. Her name is Veronica Figueroa. And it wasn't anything fancy. It was a Friday night at 945. And she just said, how are you guys holding up? And it started a conversation, but it showed me that she cared. She didn't use any platform. There was no app. There was no tool. It was just her phone and she just sent me a text and she said, how are you guys holding up? And so I would challenge everybody on this call to do something similar. Take out your phone, text your clients, text your sphere, just ask them how they're doing. Ask them how they're holding up, ask them how life is. And it might lead to some conversations about real estate, it might not. But the point would be, you know, every realtor says they're going to be your realtor for life. Every realtor says they're going to keep in touch with you after the sale. And you can't do a client appreciation party right now. You can't rent out a movie theater. You can't do a festival in the park, right? So text messages have an insanely high response rate. People don't really like getting calls as much anymore, right? So I would challenge everybody, you know, whether it's maybe once a month or every six weeks, but if you haven't reached out one-to-one -to, -one to the people that matter the most, don't forget to do that. Because the people that have always mattered the most are the people that are going to matter the most as we all weather this storm. If you built your business on past clients and referrals, which is how most people build their business, don't forget about those folks. Do something simple, meaningful, thoughtful for them 
for me, it was a simple text message, but it meant the world to me. Yeah, that's great. No pitch, just asking how you're doing. Um, I I actually got a few messages from realtors asking me similar questions, but also some of them saying, do you need anything? Yeah. And, you know, the answer was no, but it's still nice to be asked. It is. So that's great. Um, So yeah, absolutely. So Chris, thank you again. This has been such great information. Um, I'm sure you see several members in the comments saying, Very great nice. information. Thank you so much. Um, great shares, Chris, on adaption and innovation. So we, we definitely agree. And don't forget, you can see Chris in just a few months virtually again. Um, we are going to have our virtual HAR Engage in late September. Uh, tickets will be going on sale this summer, so be on the lookout for that. But Chris, you are going to be um, our featured keynote, one of our featured keynotes. So yeah. I'm excited. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm pumped to be there. Um, I'm going to bring it. I'm gonna to put together a special presentation with all new material just for HAR. And like I said before the call, like there's no speeches, <laughs> you know, there's no conferences. So virtual is all we got. I think it's really smart that you guys are pivoting into a virtual conference, a multi-day conference, tracks for agents, tracks for brokers. Can't wait to be a part of it. Yeah, it's gonna be wonderful. So thank you again, Chris. And we're looking forward to see you during Engage. Um, that is it for today's session, but we do have one more session in our COVID-19 virtual event series tomorrow at 12 noon. We're going to have Dr. Steven Kleinberg with the Kinder Institute for Urban Development and Research at Rice University. He's going to be giving us all kinds of information about where Houston is right now and where Houston is going in the future. So if you haven't signed up for that, har.com slash webinars, webinars plural. Um, Thank you again to all of you who attended. And thank you again, Chris. Thank you. Talk soon. Talk soon. See you. Bye-bye.